Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, so somebody actually gave me two kind of dead orchids to try and save somehow. And I decided, well, they're very good subjects for a video. Now, sadly, there isn't much we can do for these orchids, for the actual mother plant. But luckily for us, one of them has some keikis. And this one is pretty savable. Okay, now first let's take a look at the orchids and see what went wrong and if there's actually anything we can do. So, as you can see, there is no more orchid. There are no leaves. There isn't really much of a stem, green stem either, but there are roots. There you go, we have green roots in the pot. Now, this doesn't mean the orchid will survive and I'll tell you why. Judging by how these orchids look like, they did not suffer from root rot, but most probably either stem rot, either crown rot. Both of the possibilities are very valid. Now, the reason why an orchid can get stem rot or crown rot is because of the technique of watering from above. And this is a major don't when it comes to orchids, particularly Phalaenopsis orchids, since their crown and their stem are very sensitive. This practice is also included in my top 10 don'ts with orchids. If you're interested, if you're a beginner, check out the description down below. I have a video in which I make a list of things you should not do because they can lead to problems with orchids. And we have a clear example in front of us. Anyway, let's take each orchid and look at it a little bit more and see if really there's nothing we can do about it. Alrighty, so in the first case, we can see that we still have some roots, even in the potting medium. We have some aerial roots, which are firm, and if I put a little bit of water on them, they will green up. However, we are completely missing a stem. This used to be the stem of the orchid. It is now pretty dry. There is no crown either. It is completely gone. Now, the reason why we cannot really save this orchid, even though it has viable roots, is because it doesn't have a core. These roots are produced by a core, by the stem of the orchid. And as it just so happens, when an orchid dies, it doesn't necessarily have to die completely. And usually if it suffers from root rot, that's a pretty happy case. You can remove the dead roots, repot it into fresh medium, depending on the medium it came in. But you will have the core available. If we have a core on the orchid, an axis, in the case of Phalaenopsis orchids, we can have new growth, new roots, new leaves, everything. If the core is gone, we cannot have new growth. There is nothing to produce it. So even if these roots are still viable, they will just die slowly in time and no new roots will be created because we don't have a live core. They're just hanging on to a dead core, sadly. Along the years, I did have quite a few viewers who presented me a picture of an orchid looking like this. They told me the roots are still viable, what should they do? And it's always a sad thing to tell somebody that their orchid doesn't have any chances, but it's pretty obvious that this type of orchid doesn't have chances. If there's nothing to produce new growth, there is no future. So sadly for this orchid, there's nothing we can do. Now to assess if our diagnosis is correct, we can also cut the stem and check the inside. And as you can see, there's nothing to green. This core is almost completely dry, almost completely dead. We should have had healthy green in the core right here, not this yellowing, pretty sick looking core. So this orchid is done, sadly. Now this orchid has a very similar fate with the other one. I don't see anything alive. I have a dead core or axis in this case on this orchid. You can see it's mushy. There's really no chance anything is green in there, even though the roots are still green. And I know the existence of green roots can be deceiving, but really there's nothing green, nothing alive. So this orchid cannot be saved anymore. But what this orchid has is two keikis. Now one is in very poor condition and sadly the flower spikes started to die off before this keiki started to produce roots. It has a tiny tiny root right there so we'll try to give him a chance but honestly when a keiki doesn't have roots and you try to remove it and try to make it grow chances are very 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 slim. However on the upper part of the flower spike we have a portion of the spike which is still green and you can see at this point what this orchid tried to do. It tried to divert a lot of energy towards this keiki. So the flower spike depleted itself at the base first and pushed whatever nutrients it could into this keiki. And even though the keiki is seriously dehydrated, you can see the poor leaves, this one has some roots, which means we have a chance. So what we will focus on today is this keiki. We're gonna try to do something about the other keiki as well, but Really, I don't give him chances. This keiki though, 
he will be the future of the orchid. So to remove this keiki, we're gonna have to cut the flower spike. It's not a good idea to try to snap the keiki off. You might rip off its core. So the best thing to do is just cut the spike. There we go. Now, because this keiki does have quite a little bit of a root system, it's not in poor condition, it's just dehydrated. We don't necessarily need to keep a lot of the stem here. So what we need to do now is pot up this keiki separately and then give it some well-deserved water. Okay, so I've prepared a little pot right here. It's transparent so we can see the evolution of the roots and I'm using my medium of choice, which is clay medium. If you're in this situation, of course, you should use the medium that you prefer best. So we will pot this orchid with its roots inside the medium. Okay, so as I was potting up this orchid, my glove was a little bit wet and we can already see these roots are already capable of absorbing water. So this little guy was really, really thirsty. I'm happy to see this. It means the orchid is ready to receive water and it will get hydrated in no time. Okay, so my little guy is all potted up. I've already placed a layer of pebbles. A little side note, if you're new to my channel, and you are wondering why I'm using pebbles, it's really nothing you should use as well, particularly if you're using bark chips and sphagnum moss and coconut husk, all the traditional mediums. It has to do with my medium, my setup, a certain situation I have going on. I'll link it down below if you want to know more about the subject and I promise I will make a comprehensive video about the setup which I will always add in the description of my videos. But for now, just remember this layer is not necessary. So alrighty, as we can see, the root is already green. She's picking up moisture and this medium will stay pretty, pretty moist. Now, when a keiki grows aerial roots, there's always a chance that the transfer into a very moist environment can be detrimental. But what I did was try to keep the roots quite high on the medium. I've also let parts of it on the top and because these are pebbles, they're not water retentive, they will have a lot of ventilation, they will not keep too much moisture for the skaky. And as they grow inside the medium, they will get more adapted to that particular medium. Usually when it comes to keikis that come from a flower spike, which are aerial, I don't like to pot them in a very, very water retentive medium, such as sphagnum moss. I usually prefer to give them a little bit more moisture, but still have that airflow and that ventilation they were used to until now. In time, the roots will adapt to whatever medium you're using. I just think taking this precaution is a little bit safer. Okay, now let's see if we can do anything about this little keiki. It has a tiny new root, but he is in critical condition. So you can see the difference. He didn't benefit from its mother's help for quite a lot of time. So he's dehydrated, very tiny, probably didn't have any nutrients available. So what I plan to do is put him on top of a very water retentive medium. Not necessarily potted, there's really nothing much to pot, but I do wanna keep him in a very humid environment. Okay, so what I'm trying to achieve here is a sort of mini terrarium that is also ventilated. And on the bottom, I have wet synthic. Now this is the inorganic version of sphagnum moss, let's call it like that. I'm a pretty big fan of inorganic materials rather than traditional organic bark and sphagnum moss, but when I started this technique, obviously I used sphagnum moss. So this is just the inorganic alternative. So as you can see, the orchid is not potted or buried in this medium. I'm just trying to offer a lot of humidity around it and to this root. This root, I wetted it, it doesn't absorb water just yet, it is now ready, it's too tiny, so that's a little bit of an issue. Issue. Also, the leaves are in high humidity right now as the water will evaporate and this will prevent further transpiration and loss of water, which theoretically should help. If it just so happens that this orchid will make it and the roots grow, I can obviously transfer it to an airier environment. But for now, I think this is the best solution I can come up with in trying to save this little guy but chances for him are pretty low. We're gonna give it a go and I'm gonna keep you up to date with what happens. Alrighty, so these are the two little guys that we're trying to save right now. I have no idea how the orchid actually looks like, so if they make it and if they manage to bloom, it's gonna be very rewarding and quite exciting. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and other plants videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye. By the way, I changed my gloves. I know this will sound silly, but it's like I had an epiphany. Oh my goodness, gloves without that talcum powder, they're just so much better. My hands are super dry anyway, and I wash my hands so frequently and I work so much that it's... I always have horrible hands, and that talcum just makes my hands so much drier. 
and it stinks so much. And I just discovered these gloves. They have no talcum. In my region, they're called nitril or something of the sorts. They're a little bit more expensive, but totally worth it. So yeah, if you've already knew about this, just don't mind me. Better later than never, right? <laughs>